This is the second video about my new folding woodworking station. Today I'll be showing you how to use and make the small router table for use with the workstation or on its own. I've cut part of the side and back pieces of the router table to reduce its total weight. These gaps can be cut without rounded corners. This step isn't indispensable if weight is not a problem in your case. This is the insert plate I've used. It comes with a plunge base for routers that are 65mm in diameter. In my case I've decided to move it towards the bench saw when installing it. This way I will have a larger work surface in front of the router, and I've also been able to install a miter channel. It's not usual to install a miter channel for such a small router table, but I wanted to make the most out of this tool. This is optional and you can adapt the position of the insert plate to your needs. You could, for example, install the router in the center of the work table and ditch the miter channel. The insert plate isn't indispensable either. You could use a piece of acrylic or the router base itself as an insert. However, this insert plate is lightweight, fairly precise, and being able to lift and lower the router from the top is a point in its favor. The insert has four bolts for fastening it, and another four headless bolts to keep it level with the work table. I've installed some push pins to avoid damaging the table when leveling the insert. At first I wanted to glue the work table to the sides, but in the end I decided to use bolts and barrel nuts. Both methods are perfectly valid, but I opted for the latter just in case I need to reform or change the work table someday. I've installed a plywood strip so that I can fasten the miter channel. These are the four parts that will allow me to hold the insert to the work table. For that I've installed some threaded inserts. The table has some grooves underneath so that it can be inserted into the sides. Here is where we should apply wood glue if we're not going to use the barrel nuts. To make the work table, I used some black MDF I had in my workshop. We could also use standard MDF or the same plywood I used to build the rest of the cabinet. If the board has melamine of HPL on both sides, even better. I've designed the router so that it can be moved about 15 centimeters forward and backward on the foldable stand. This is because of two reasons. First, so that I can access the side of the bench saw more easily, but also to achieve a slightly larger work surface when cutting with the saw. I'm going to run some tests so that we can see the router in action. First with a chamfer bit. Now I'll swap it with a straight bit to cut a groove. In this case I'm going to use the bench saw fence. To get the most out of this router, it would be a good idea to install a couple of aluminum profiles on the saw fence. I notice this fence has some play when pulling it up, even when locked. This won't be a problem for most routing projects. Another option is to make a new fence, like I did for my mobile workbench. In this case, it will be necessary to install a couple of T-Track profiles on the router's work table. I'm going to remove the bolts to show you how it works.
the MITRE channel will allow me to use feather boards. It will also let me use the miter gate so that I can router end grain or at an angle. This router table is halfway between a trim router table and one of the larger ones. When removing it from the foldable stand, I can use it everywhere else in the workshop, putting it on a stand that's not too high and on the workbench with the help of some wood strips. This is the 3D SketchUp model included in the plans for sale on my website. I'll put a link in the video description. Now I'll show you how to build this DIY compact router. I'm going to start with the sides. I'm going to mark and make all the required holes and rabbits. With the column drill, I'll drill the four holes. And with the plunge saw and its rail, I'll finish the process. The next step is to cut grooves to hold the cabinet, as well as rabbits to insert the back part of the cabinet. Now I'll finish the part for the channels that will allow me to move the router table on the folding stand. First I drill two holes, and for the channel I'll start with a jigsaw and finish the process with the router table. I've marked the lines with a knife to avoid tear out on the wood. Here you can skip the router step and finish the job with just the jigsaw. I'm going to stick the two sides along with their parts with wood glue. While the glue is drying, I'm going to mark and make the necessary cuts in the back of the cabinet. Just like before, we can decide not to make these cuts if we don't need to reduce the weight of the router table. It's time to glue the back part. I've had to put some pieces of plywood in the gaps to avoid warping the cabinet when using the clamps. To make this step easier, I believe we could also use screws instead of glue. I make sure the cabinet's measurements are correct and I mark the position of the groups I'll have to cut on the underside of the work table. I'll use the dado stack and first of all run some tests on some leftover board. It seems everything's correct, so I'll install the router insert plate. After marking its position, I make four holes so that I can cut with the jigsaw.
Now I'm going to set up the adjustable router template and with a flush trim bit, I'll finish the job. I'm going to use the dado set again to cut the groove required to install the miter channel. Now with some leftover board, I'll make the four parts that will allow me to fasten the insert plate to the work table. These parts are quite small, so as a precaution, I'll machine them in a bigger piece before cutting them to size. I mark and drill the required holes to fasten them to the work table. After attaching them, I place the insert plate to mark the position of the threaded inserts and the push pin. I have to remove the parts to finish this step. I make a hole for the threaded insert and install it, along with the push pin. Before installing the black MDF top, I've noticed the cabinet can't reach the vent saw work table because the saw legs are in the way. That's why I've made this small curved cut. Also, and even though this isn't in the plans, I'm going to fasten this piece of a board in the lower part of the cabinet to reinforce this area. I don't think it's indispensable, and you can do it any other time. Now I'm going to drill the required holes for the bolts and barrel nuts. This step is better done before gluing any parts of the cabinets together. But now I have no choice but to use this system because it's something I've decided along the way. I have to drill more holes to install the miter channel. I'm also going to place two M6 bolts on both ends of the channel. This last step is optional. I think these bolts will reinforce the router stop. I'm going to screw the insert plate to the base of the router so that I can place it on the cabinet. I'll use the insert's four headless bolts to make it level with the work table. Now all that's left is to make some knobs with some leftover black MDF. I've glued the printable template to mark the holes and cuts. I'll use hex bolts with their heads embedded in the board. I've made a spacer out of MDF, which I'll glue with epoxy to the knob. Finally, I'm going to level the bench saw with the router work table using the four bolts I had installed on the folding stand. That's all for today. In a few days, I'll upload the next video in the series, where I'll be showing you how to make a compact assembly table for this workbench.